Hi, I'm Reverend Wendy Craig Purcell here at the Unity Center in San Diego. Thank you so much for watching today. If you'd like to support the work that we do here, please consider making a contribution. Go to our website. It's easy to do. Thank you in advance for that contribution. We have been exploring together a deeper understanding of our spiritual journey. And this morning in particular, I want to talk to you about the idea of your soul's GPS. Our GPS, we have to turn on, whether it's on our phone or in our car, but in order, for, in order for us to receive the signal, right? The signal's always being sent, but in order for us to take advantage of it, we have to turn something on. And the same thing is true for us. In order for us to receive the signal, we've got to be awake and receptive to it. It is always transmitting. There's always information. There's always guidance and support and instruction coming to us from spirit and coming to us from our soul. But we're not always plugged into it. We're not always listening to it or for it. I want to talk briefly this morning about three ways our soul's GPS works to guide us and support us. And the very first is through a particular feeling. And it is a feeling that we often refer to in metaphysics as a feeling of divine discontent. Divine discontent. Say that with me. Divine discontent. Doesn't that sound so much better with the adjective before the word discontent? Divine discontent, because it really is that. Divine discontent is kind of the longing of the soul. It's kind of like a restless feeling that we have, um, not on the surface level of our being, but at a very deep level, this restless feeling of there's got to be something more, or I'm not quite in my right place. I'm, I'm journeying down my life, but I'm not quite right in, in my right place, and I know it. I feel it. There's this discontent. I, I maybe can't quite say what it is just yet, but I know that something's a little bit off. It's too easy for us to dismiss that. And what happens when we dismiss that feeling of divine discontent, we never get out what the real message is then, and we wind up continuing to have this background feeling all the time of something's just not quite right in my life. And yet on a soul level, we long for that divine connection. We long for that feeling of rightness. The journey is the journey of our soul's longing for a divine experience, for a connection with the, with the divine. But in our very busy human lives, it's not the thing we usually pay enough attention to. We pay attention to so much external that oftentimes we fail to pay attention to that underlying discontent that we're feeling in our souls. Jesus spoke a little bit about this, I think, when he was saying that we were to seek first the kingdom of God God is not a person, God is not a thing. To seek first the kingdom of God is to seek a certain consciousness. It's a spiritual awareness of the divine presence. He said we were to seek that first and then what would the result be or what would the reward be for having sought that first? Do you remember? Yeah. Amen. Everything else will be given to you. All the other things that we might need or that we might want. And the interesting thing about that is when we have things in the right order, the right order or the better, healthier order, in this case being the, the experience of consciousness first before the manifestation of things, what happens when we have it in the right order is we become very unattached to the things themselves. It's not that we may not still want some of those things and need some of them, but our relationship to them is very different because we are not looking for those things to fill a God-sized emptiness inside, which those things can never fill because the whole is a spiritual vacuum wanting a divine connection. Does that make sense? And so it doesn't mean we still don't look for and dream and 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 seek to manifest the things that might give us joy in our life, but our relationship with that is very different. It's a healthy relationship. So that one of the ways that our soul's GPS communicates with us is through the feeling of divine discontent. Another is through intuition. That's the second, is through intuition. You do have an intuitive voice. 
Thanks for listening. The Unity Center, transforming lives and healing our world. Check us out Sundays at 9 and 11. Many people enjoy Reverend Wendy's talks and meditations and aren't able to attend the Unity Center in person. If you're part of our extended family from around the world and would like to help support the Unity Center, please go to our website or download our free app, which offers even more ways to connect with the Unity Center. Namaste.